It's time to send in the dogs if you're a Becker Bulldogs fan. We're taking a trip up the Mississippi for a Mississippi 8 Conference doubleheader. The boys will go first. The Big Lake Hornets host, or I should say pay a visit to the Becker Bulldogs. I'm Mike Eden, all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory. Becker returning to the Mississippi 8, and in doing so, take part in two conference doubleheaders, Cambridge Isanti and Big Lake. This is the second meeting between the two schools. Becker won the first meeting in this series, 52-47. Big Lake, 3-11. Becker, 8-7. Delano, the top team in Section 5-3A on the boys' side. But there are some players to watch for the part of Becker. Nate Middlestad is one of them. Six 20-point games coming in a seven-game stretch. His season-high 27 against Holy Family Catholic. Kay Callahan with 10 points or more in the last two games, and Nick Canute, 10 points or more in six of the last eight games. Wyatt Winhorst is the player to watch for Big Lake, averaging 15.1 points per game. Jack Iverson and Peyton McConville both averaging 12. Big Lake, their last win came against St. Francis, 99-93. They won the first two games of the year, then went on an extended losing streak, dropping nine in a row. They're hoping to change that here. Becker trying to reverse some fortunes as well. They've lost their last three. They had a five-game win streak earlier in the month. Let's take a look at the starting five. For Big Lake, it's Brady Jazuski, number 12. Wyatt Windhorse, number 13. Alec Moorhead, number 23. Peyton McConville, number 24. And Jack Iverson, number 35. Becker will start Nick Middlestad, number two. Josh Foby, number five. Nick Canute, number 20. Carter Hietala, number 23. And Kate Callahan, number 33. Hietala, that might take a moment or two to get used to. And this goes without saying, this is our first broadcast since the death of Kobe Bryant. And all across the country, all across the world, I have to imagine several of these young men and young women that we will see in our later game looked up to him as a role model for what he did with the Los Angeles Lakers and what he was doing as an ambassador, coaching his daughter Gianna, one of the nine who perished. There's an alley-oop. Kate Callahan scores, and Becker gets on the board. I have to imagine with the death of Kobe and Gianna as Big Lake fires a three. That does not drop, but a tip in by Jack Iverson. A lot of the players you're seeing tonight all across the state, in high school, college, pros and beyond. His death shook the entire nation. This basketball community, it's an extended one, but it's a family. And it wouldn't be surprised if several of these players and more that we'll see throughout the rest of the season as Peyton McConville hits the elbow J, will draw a little more inspiration. Becker calling a timeout as they ran into some trouble on the inbound. 17.08 left in the first half. 4-2 our score. And with this timeout, we'd like to remind you that if you want to support long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite prep athletes and beyond, visit us at patreon.com slash tsbtelevision, paypal.me slash tsbtelevision, or sponsor us through Cash App, dollar sign tsbtelevision. And we've got some shirt tosses here. And we'd like to thank Becker High School ever since we paid a visit last year for the Becker Coma Park Girls game. Becker wanted us back. And we found a date that works. T-shirt toss is complete. Not too often that the girls game goes second in a doubleheader. But it is becoming more common and 
I'm not surprised given the following the Becker girls developed, especially after last year's run to a silver medal. Here's Yedela to Nick Canute. Bounce pass, Yedela pump fakes. Peyton McConville didn't bite. He gets the block, Iverson on the run through the hole, he'll shoot two. It's been a rough season for Big Lake. Not a lot of wins, three and 11, but the rivalry games always bring something a little extra. And it, whether it's high school or college, you know you get to play your rivals twice in most cases. Iverson settles for a split. Callahan out to Fulby for three. Missed everything. And as you can see in the background, Becker, a lengthy history when it comes to football. The girls' basketball team has been to state three times, winning in 2007, finishing second last year. Big Lake on the run. White Windhorse scores in transition. Offensively, these two teams are similar. Becker averaging 62 a game, Big Lake 59. Nick Middlestad slices through the lane, gets the roll, and we'll have a chance at three. Middlestad averaging 16.4 points per game, four rebounds per game, and 4.4 assists. Completes the three-point play. Seven-five, Big Lake over Becker. And the Hornets answer right back. Wyatt Windhorst, I believe, got the bucket. Yes, he did. Becker looking to answer in transition. Three does not fall for Canute. Hornets. Looking to run it out again. Pass not on target. Becker picks it up. And an offensive foul on Kate Callahan. Looked like he led with the elbow. The Becker fans see it differently. Becker fans are in front of me. The Big Lake fans, they like that call. That's to be expected. As I was going to say, Becker, they've had an up and down season. They've had big wins. They've also had some lopsided losses. Hard to tell which team you're gonna get. And the pressure up top results in a traveling violation on Wyatt Windhorse. With 15.06 left in the first half. 9-5, Big Lake over Becker. Bulldogs looking to stay above 500. Big Lake looking to get a win and a boost in their morale. Big Lake was going to let that go out of bounds. Brady Jasuski ends up drawing a foul. Either way, it worked out for the Hornets. Mario Reese, the head coach for Big Lake. Josh Erke the head coach for Becker. Kietala with a steal. Pump fake, Middlestad, three, no good. Rebound McConville. He fires the three, short. Rebound goes to number 24, Carter Callahan. There he is on the right side. Long skip to Phoebe. Three ball, corner pocket. More pressure by the Bulldogs. 
Foul this time. So that will stay Big Lake ball. Carter Hiedela picks up his second foul and he'll have to take a seat. Eric Sievert will take his place. Sixteen footer, the turnaround comes up short for Jack Iverson, but he gets his own miss. Nothing doing. Winhorse too strong. Foby, the skip. Canute, three ball, corner pocket. That right corner paying dividends for the Bulldogs, and they take the first lead, eleven to nine. Another foul on the Bulldogs. And they are out of fouls to give. So Becker's pressure defense, they've been aggressive. But now they're in the penalty the rest of the way. Big opportunity for the Hornets. Wyatt Windhorse drains the three from the right wing. Windhorse stepped to seven early. This time a foul on Big Lake. Brady Jezeski is hit with his first, and it's a shooting foul, so Middlestad to the line for two. Middlestad, season high 27 points against Holy Family Catholic, as we noted earlier. Hasn't recorded a double double, but he did get nine assists against Zimmerman. Moorhead, top of the key. Winhorst. Runners too strong. The carom will result in a jump ball. Big Lake with the arrow. 12 31 left in the first half. Pump fake, now a drive. Carter Callahan stayed with it. Middlestead, the skip to Canute. Blocking foul, he'll shoot two. Canute averaging 8.7 points, three rebounds per game, 1.2 assists. Missing the front end there. It's been a close one so far. It was a close one the last time these two played. Earlier this month. And I'll say this. Covering as many games as I do, a lot of your meals consist of whatever's at the concession stand. And whoever the pizza provider is, as Iverson hits the two, they make really good pizza. Sloppy pass by Eric Sievert. It's picked off by Wyatt Windhorst. We're tied at 14. Three on the way, bullseye. Alec Moorhead with his first field goal. 
And the Hornets retake the lead. Mid-range day comes up short for Callahan. Moorhead looking for the entry feed. Becker takes it away. Bulldogs swing it around. That was a tough lane for Kate Callahan to drive through. Unable to score there. 17-14. Moorhead out to Jaszewski. Iverson almost lost it on the spin move. Moorhead's three doesn't drop. Tried to draw the foul there, didn't work. Wyatt Windhorst, fade away, yes. And the Hornets with a five point lead. Several of Becker's starters on the bench due to foul trouble. Three from the top of the key is pure. Eric Siever gets on the board. Little dance down the lane, but Peyton McConville has nothing to show for it. Becker can't execute in transition. Now Big Lake with numbers. Windhorse brings it up. Jaziski for three, not that time. Callahan with the rebound. Becker looking for the three. Kay Callahan gives it to them. And the long ball factoring heavily in this Mississippi 8 rivalry. Twenty to nineteen, our score. Mitchell Spanier in the game for the Hornets, number twenty. It's a three-point barrage. Peyton McConville drops a tray. Nick Canute gets the floater to fall, and we're tied at twenty-two. Big Lake says right back at you, Jazuski through the hole, and he gets on the board. Now they bring pressure up top, and that's gonna result in a foul on Alec Moorhead. <laughs> Becker, more mindful, Big Lake still with two fouls to give, if you look at the foul tally. That was Cam Fisher. Good feed by Canute. And it's 24 all. Becker gets a stop. Again. Canute tried to hook up with Fisher. That time he couldn't put it down. Now Big Lake will shoot two. Alec Moorhead went for the reverse to prevent his shot from being blocked, and I guess it paid off. Shooting foul, so two free throws. Alec Moorhead, averaging 10.1 a game. 
One of four men in double figures for the Hornets. They'll have to settle for a split there. But Big Lake does take the lead back, 25-24. Winhorst. Drive comes up empty. Rebound going to Carter Callahan. Kiedela with a little dance. And a foul 80 feet away from Becker's basket. So free throws coming for the Hornets. And Carter Hiedela hit with his third personal foul. Something to keep an eye on. Not only is this a conference rivalry, Becker and Big Lake in the same section. One and one for Peyton McConville. He gets the front end to fall. McConville averaging 12.2 based on available data. Hits both there. And a timeout is called with 7.27 left in the first half. Timeout, Big Lake. As we were saying, not only is this a conference rivalry, this also carries implications in the section. In fact, with the Mississippi 8 and some of the changes taking place, several conference teams in section 5-3-A. Delano leads the group at 12-2. Monticello is next. St. Francis is in there as well. So this game, Big Lake figures to go on the road regardless of what happens in their first playoff game. And Becker, if you go by QRF, has some work to do in order to catch for Corey. Becker losing the ball to Wyatt Winhorst. He's having himself a nice game. Winhorst pulls up. Yes. Winhorst up to 11. Good hesitation move on the part of Carter Callahan as I was looking up Becker's results in the section. Lost to Delano and Monticello, both lopsided affairs. Becker will host for Corey next Monday. But the Bulldogs have some work to do. As it stands right now, they would be in line to at least host a first round section game at the four seed. And with this being late January, we're gonna talk a lot about section implications. Nick Middlestab will make sure we talk about his three point shooting, that's his first triple. And we're tied again at 29. Entry feed to Mitchell Spanier. Pays off, that was Alex Ombangi with the dime. Steal for the Hornets. Three ball. Offensive rebound, number 21. But he ends up losing it, that was Kate Late. Mario Ruiz going to his bench late in the first half here. Cam Fisher drills the three. Bungie to Cade Layton, nothing doing on the drive. Becker 
Let's see what they can do with it. They haven't led by more than one possession this half. Hornets time the pass, and that is an intentional foul on Nick Middlestad. Peyton McConville got the steal. Middlestad grabbed him by the jersey. We don't have a clear path rule at high school or the college level. So that's the closest thing to it. And you saw the official make the ax for intentional foul. That means two free throws and the ball for Big Lake. The combo hits the free throws. That gives Big Lake the lead again, 33-32. A key sequence potentially for the Hornets. Jack Iverson. Couldn't get the hook. Nick Canute recovers, goes up, and will shoot two. As we noted in the start of the broadcast, Canute 10 points or more in six of the last eight games. Canute splits at the line. Nice drive through the lane. Ready to Zuski. I'll take that to the hoop. Put me on the drive through. High low, pump fake, and drawing a foul is Eric Siever. Siever, the 6'2 sophomore guard. Has a three pointer to his credit. On the season, averaging three and a half points per game. And under a rebound and an assist. Comes off the bench, doesn't put up a ton of numbers. And he'll try to give Becky the lead here, or I should say a tie. That's the last foul to give for the Hornets, for the Curious. Sievert splits. Big Lake still up 35-34. And the boys edition of our Mississippi 8 Conference doubleheader. Iverson lays it in. And it looks like somebody from the Big Lake student section brought a stuffed dog. But that doesn't phase Nick Canute in the slightest as he scored the layup there, comes up with a steal. Found Middlestad, pass not on the mark though, so Middlestad has to back off. And Josh Foby throws it away. Big Lake, that could have been a crucial three pointer. I know we're still in the first half. But in terms of momentum, Big Lake has kept a slight edge over Becker. Three, yes, Cade Callahan. 
nothing but the bottom of the net, as Dan Patrick would say. Trying not to shout too much. My voice is back to normal, but had a nasty cold that put me on the ropes for about a week. It's a high arcing three that does everything but go in. But Umbangi swoops in, collects the board, and picks up a pair of second chance points to tie us at 39. Iverson with the rejection. So far more offensively oriented battle than the last meeting between these two teams. Offensive foul. And from here, Carter Callahan set up well outside the restricted zone. For the curious, Becker season high, 89 in the win over Zimmerman. Big Lake scoring 99 in the win over St. Francis and 97 in the win over Zimmerman. So it's not unprecedented for these two teams to put up big numbers. Costi thought about it. Three doesn't drop. McConville tries the crossover and the entry feed intercepted. Middlestad, pump fake, and Carter Callahan looking for a lane, doesn't see it. Less than a minute to play. And an offensive foul on Becker's end. Second foul on Nick Middlestead. <laughs> Tied at 39. It's been back and forth. Neither side able to lead by more than five, and Big Lake throws it away. An errant pass on the part of Mitchell Spaniel. Nick Canute, his mid-range J comes up short. Big Lake, a three in transition. Brady Jazuski can't connect. Callahan, looking for help. Kicks it back out. And drawing contact was Nick Canute. He will shoot free throws. With 6.9 on the clock. One-on-one -on -one situation for Nick Canute. He has nine points. Didn't need a friendly bounce that time on the second one. And it looks like we're getting ready for a youth night presentation. Not only is this a doubleheader, it's also youth night. 6.9, Becker with a two point lead, Big Lake. Can get a shot off though if they move it quick, and they do. Three ball, nothing doing. Right idea, just a little too much mustard. It was a neck and neck first half, and it's Becker who holds a slight edge, 41 39. 
over Big Lake in our Mississippi 8 Conference doubleheader. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Life is a highway, especially around Becker, because in order to get here, you have to go up along Highway 10 in the state of Minnesota. Bet you Tom Cochran didn't know that one. Second half about to start in the boys' version of our Mississippi 8 conference doubleheader. Becker and Big Lake. Becker 8 and 7, Big Lake 3 and 11. First half, neck and neck. It was a close one. Neither side led by more than five. Looking at some of the first half numbers, Wyatt Windhorse leads the Hornets with 11 points. Nick Canute leads the Bulldogs with 11 points. Peyton McConville with nine. Those are some of your Big Lake notables. On the Becker side, Nick Middlestad and Kate Callahan both have eight each. The girls will follow. And during the halftime, we had a skills contest where members of the youth community got to shoot some buckets for some money. And we had a few $25 winners, and then they honored members of the 5,000, 10,000, and 25,000 shot club over the summer. Becker trying to build up the ranks in basketball. Big Lake with the steal. This is McConville. Sloppy entry pass, but the Hornets recover. And Moorhead knocks down the three. Another steal by the Hornets. They have been a resilient bunch throughout this one. As we noted, the first meeting between these two was close. So even though Big Lake has a three and 11 record, that goes out the window when you play a conference rival. Big Lake has a few of them. Monticello and Becker, I believe, are double headers on their end. And for Becker, it's Cambridge Isani and Big Lake. Highlighting some of the talent we have in central Minnesota. And speaking of talent, Jazuski uses his to drive to the lane and go in for two. Another steal by the Hornets. Coming up with a lot of stops. And they translate it into a transition triple. Alec Moorhead goes up to 10. Timeout, Becker, largest lead of the game for either side as Big Lake is up 47-41. And with this time out, we'd like to remind you that if you want long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes, just be hungry like the wolf and channel your inner Duran Duran. Uh, I now show myself out. Actually, you can visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television, paypal.me slash TSB television, or cash app, simply TSB television. It's a tight fit up here at Becker High School. That being said, it's a gym, one of only two that I can say where I've been to both incarnations. I came up here many moons ago when the Breakdown Tip-Off Classic was held at multiple sites. It's now at Hopkins for the girls and the boys, but Becker was the host one year. And then of course we came back up here last year for Becker Como Park girls basketball, and now we're here for a doubleheader. 
of epic proportions. 1651 left in the second half. And not what you want on an ATO play. Another turnover and then a foul. A rough start to the second half for the Bulldogs. And that's the fourth foul on Carter Hiedela, so he's gonna have to ride the bench for a while. Long skip. Another foul, this one, on number 25. Gabe Lindbaum. It's Josh Erke going deep into the Becker bench due to the foul situation. That time, the Bulldogs get a much needed stop. Three ball, corner pocket. And even though it was only a six point game, that three for Sievert could help Becker settle down after a frenetic start by Big Lake. Fade away, does not drop. Rebound going to Gabe Lindbaum. And that is an offensive foul. Lindbaum leading his case. From up here, it looked like he led with his shoulder. And now a technical foul. It came from one of the officials who sprinted over to the scores table. And it appears it's on Josh Erke. As Erke and Lindbaum took exception to that offensive foul call. So free throws coming for Peyton McConville and a chance for Big Lake to extend their lead. Conville makes both. Iverson. Out to Jaziski. And he's fouled. Fouls are piling up on the Bulldogs, much like the first half. Callahan it with his third. And now the Bulldogs have to navigate foul trouble here. Becker finally draws an offensive foul. And it's 49-44. Let's see if the Bulldogs can cash in on this opportunity. As we said, it's been a close one. Feels like Big Lake has all the momentum right now, but that could change in a close game. Oh, they had it. Couldn't cash in. Big Lake scores on the fast break. Hey, that rhymes. Alec Moorhead with the layup. Oh. 
Another offensive foul. That one will go on Cade Callahan. That one, a tough foul, and not to say I disagreed with it, but Cade Callahan lost his balance. And the Bulldogs having their word with the officials. Callahan lost his balance and crashed into his assignment. An unfortunate miscue in the part of the Bulldogs who trail by seven. Largest deficit of the game. Hornets looking for three more. They don't get it. Middlestad throws it away. A sloppy second half on the part of the Bulldogs so far. Big Lake will call a timeout of the 32nd variety. So both will have three remaining. And it's the Hornets with a 51-44 edge over Becker. Which gives us time for another t-shirt toss and an ode to Bruce Springsteen. The score 51-44. We've got plenty of games coming up this week if you're watching this on YouTube. As you know, we're not live, but we do our best to act like it. On the 31st, we'll have the second edition of De La Salle Holy Angels Girls Basketball, one of the biggest rivalries in the Tri-Metro. And then on Saturday, a triple header, starting with a girls-boys double header between Maranatha Christian Academy and Minneapolis North, and then the primetime game. Eden Prairie, De La Salle Boys Hoops at the island. That one, I can't wait. One of the top teams in 4A and the defending 3A champions. Jack Iverson sees a lane and scores. Mario Reese, if the name sounds familiar, was once head coach of Brooklyn Center. Before moving a few miles northwest, up along Highway 10, to take the big leg job. And the Hornets, who are looking just to get some wins to validate all the work they put in this season, they lead by nine. Come up empty in that possession, but the Hornets are giving the Bulldogs a run on the road. And that's a walk on Carter Callahan. The Becker boys program was a team that Dan Baird, now head coach of the girls team, was involved in for a long time. Moved over to the girls. And the results have spoken loudly over the last couple of years. Iverson, turn around, gets a friendly roll. Jack Iverson up to 11. And we've got four big lake players in double figures. Pretty balanced too, 11-12, 11-11 for Windhorse, Moorhead, McConville, and Iverson. Middlestad finds his man, but Cam Fisher can't hit on the three. Big Lake on the run, another fast break play. White Windhorse, the beneficiary. And Big Lake running on all cylinders in the second half. Fisher. We play on. If Big Lake scores here, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Erke calls another timeout. 
Entry pass intercepted by the Bulldogs. Here's Middlestad. Becker looking for a dose of momentum. They don't get it there. And then Big Lake coughs it up. Becker basketball, 11-20 left in the second half, 57-44. Becker trying to end a three-game losing streak. They'll get another shot on Friday when they play Cambridge Iceni. That one. Will be just a regular game. No boys girls doubleheader associated with that one. Right now we've got a little hot potato going on. Wyatt Windhorse with the steal, but could not find a lane. And then he is hit with a foul as Gabe Lindbaum got the rebound there. They'll get another shot at Monticello on February 18th in the case of Becker, and they end the regular season at Cambridge Isani. These two teams met just two weeks ago. Deep three, bullseye. Josh Foby gives the Bulldogs a much needed boost. Last touch by Foby. Bulldogs fans taking exception. Big Lake. As we said, 3 and 11. They get North Branch on January 31st, and they will take part in the Community Clash, one of many events hosted by the Breakdown. They will play Simley. We have something of a frenzy going on here. Big Lake tries to protect their 10 point lead, make it 12 as Wyatt Winhorst was there for the second chance. Make those chances count. First, second, third. Gabe Lindbaum makes that drive count. He'll have a chance at three. That's the first basket for Gabe Lindbaum, the 6'2 senior guard. Second foul on Windhorst. And the chance for the Bulldogs to pick up a little more rhythm. And the lefty completes the three point play. Becker, nine of 12 at the stripe. Big Lake, six of eight. Becker brings the pressure, they get the steal. That proved fruitful to them early on in the game. Hesitation move, nothing doing. Offensive rebound. Middlestad, miscommunication. Tough break for the Bulldogs as Brady Palman got the offensive rebound. And now Big Lake, bullseye. Alec Moorhead. Those corner threes. Paying high dividends for the Hornets. Moorhead up to 15. And the Hornets go back up by 12. Becker with the answer, not that time. And the rebound to number 20, Mitchell Spanier. Again, Big Lake 
That could have been a dagger play. But they get an offensive rebound. Elbow J doesn't fall. Foby with the board. Lindbaum, the skip, and a foul. That will send Carter Callahan to the line. Carter with just two points. On the season, he averages 4.1. And at this stage of the game, getting a chance to score with the clock stopped at 8.37, even though that's plenty of time, Becker will take that opportunity as they try to work their way back. Coughed up the ball several times at the start of the frame. Offensive rebound, this would be big. But Middlestead can't get the three-point shot to go in. Becker staying with it, they get another steal. Not giving up on those threes. Canoe can't make it fall. And Big Lake collects the rebound. Here's Ambangi. He stripped. Becker coming up with a couple of steals here. But can they parlay them into points? Trying to make that three point shot work. But any bucket, even just to get it within 10, would be helpful. Big Lake not giving them anything to work with inside. They have to settle for a corner three from Foby and that doesn't go in. And if Big Lake is able to hang on, as we said, it would go without saying, this would likely be their biggest win of the season. Ricori, Zimmerman, and St. Francis are the other ones. Ricori third in the QRF, so. Big Lake has picked up some wins against solid opponents. And one over Becker would be a nice footnote on this season, whatever happens. They're taking their time here. Windhorst, that did everything but go in. As he tried to work his way in, Becker going for the outlet. Big Lake got the deflection and it went off of Middlestad. So Big Lake's defensive play prevents a Becker fast break. And with 6.45 to go, Becker running out of time. Now in this group, the burning question, can you beat Delano? Regardless of how these two teams perform the rest of the way, it looks like Delano has the inside track to getting that state tournament berth. Nick Canute fouled as he took the shot. Last foul to give for the Hornets. And an opportunity for Becker to score with the clock stopped. 6.24 and counting. Well, Will, once we complete the free throws. Canoon has not scored in the second half until now. And that's one of the big differences in this half. The big scores for the Bulldogs up until Canute hit that free throw. Middlestad, Kate Callahan, and Canute had not scored. While the Hornets were getting production in the likes of Iverson, Moorhead, Windhorst, Becker getting the turnover there. So they get the ball back. A prime chance to close this margin. Lindbaum, top of the key, in trouble. Finds an escape route. And Becker will get another shot at it. Yedela, back in the game, he has four fouls. Nice vision, Canute called it, knew he was wide open, and Yedela with the easiest backdoor play, another steal by Brady Powman. 
Becker can't score there. They force a traveling violation on Big Lake, and the Bulldogs pick up a lifeline. 5.40 to go, seven point game. Becker looked all sorts of disorganized just a few minutes ago. They are not getting bounces to go their way. You heard the Becker side let out a collective exhale. The Big Lake unable to score. So the Bulldogs escape with no damage. Canute to Palman. He's looking for Callahan on the bounce pass. Kietala comes up with it. That was Sievert, I should say, number 22, and an offensive foul. That is the last skip for the Bulldogs. Third on Canude. You've got several big lake players with three fouls, including Windhorst, Moorhead, McConville, and Iverson, four of the five starters with three fouls. Kietala has four for the Bulldogs. They are not giving up on that pressure defense, and with all the turnovers they forced as a result, there's another one. They haven't been the most efficient at scoring off of them, but they're creating so many chances here to get themselves back in this. They only trail by seven. An exciting close, perhaps. An exciting finish on tap. We shall see. Three ball. Canoe can't hit it. Becker can't save it. Phoebe did go out of bounds. The official <laughs> corrected himself. And Mario Reitz getting an explanation. And now one of the officials is talking with somebody from Big Lake, I presume. A member of the athletic staff. And they're having the Big Lake student section move up a row. Apparently, there are the too close to the bench or something was said that caught the attention of officials and they wanted to put a stop to it before it escalated. Wyatt Windhorst, in the meantime, scores on the layup. Nine-point game with four minutes to go. Canute, three ball, short. Another offensive rebound. And a blocking foul is called as Kay Callahan. Picked up the rock, he'll shoot two, but the clock stopped at 348. That is the fourth foul on Jack Iverson. So Iverson sitting with four. And Hierla with four. Something to monitor as we play out the final 348 of this one. And Callahan picks up his first points of the second half. Becker, 41 points in the first half, just 15 here. And they've struggled to connect from long range, but Callahan makes both free throws to make it a seven point game. 
Traveling violation, although that might have been a break on the part of Windhorse because if Becker did get the strip, there was an easy two points waiting to be collected. You saw Big Lake getting a stop there. But a sloppy pass. Gives Becker the rock, but not for long. Some pandemonium ensuing here in the final minutes. Wyatt Windhorse settles things down and lays in another one. He's up to 19. Eight points in the second half. Kate Callahan ran out of real estate. Lucky he didn't turn it over. Fires the three. No good. Nobody on the weak side. Jump ball, Becker with the arrow, 3.03 to go. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. Now Becker with two timeouts remaining. Now, if Big Lake does hang on, what this could do is jumble things up for that 4-5 seed. With 3.03 to go, it's not quite the weekend yet, but these two teams know how to work. Becker and Fridley, here's why this game could be important. If you go by QRF, Becker and Fridley separated by about two and a half points. And the difference between four and five is hosting a first round section game. That is what is at stake. And if Big Lake is able to get a win over Becker, even though Becker won the first meeting, that would be something coaches would consider when it comes time to vote. Now, if you're wondering, neither team, Becker or Big Lake, had Fridley on the schedule. Big Lake will get Delano on February 4th. We'll see how that goes. The Delano Tigers, the heavy favorite to come out of the group. But getting that home court advantage for the first round and potentially future rounds, some sections go beyond the first round now. And a win by Big Lake over Becker could drop Becker's rating and potentially create a path for Fridley, even though we still have a month to go in the regular season. Dead ball rebound to the Hornets. Even though we still have a month to go in the regular season. Every game, every result is a crucial one. Stay Big Lake ball, White Windhorst went up, his shot was blocked, and I was wondering if we were going to have a foul there, we don't. And Kay Callahan is hit with his fifth foul. So Kay Callahan's night is over. He'll finish with 10 points, just two in the second half. One and one situation here. Sievert will go in for Josh Foby. Jack Iverson, one and one. Becker throws it away. We saw this last Friday with Hopkins at St. Michael Abbottville, where the Knights were given a golden opportunity and couldn't do anything with it. Jaszewski completes the layup and that might be enough for the Hornets to get out of here with a win. Deep three, nothing doing for Middlestad. Foul on the Hornets though, that will stop the clock with 2.14, one and one range. So Nick Canute 
will try to make this a nine point game, but again, one and one. Girls basketball teams waiting to take their turn. Becker 16 of 19 at the stripe. And it looks like they're going to play the foul and chase game here. But they don't have a lot of options. Gabe Lindbaum picks up his third foul. And they still have Hiedela with four. Unless he picked up his fifth. I don't think so. Jack Iverson. Gets the front end to drop this time. Iverson connects on both. That puts him up to 13. Three ball, corner pocket. Nick Knut trying to keep Becker in this. And it's an eight point game with 201 left in the second half. Becker. Calling timeout, they have one remaining. As you know, the clock does not stop for a made basket. So Becker can only stop the clock one more time as Big Lake hopes to Wang Chung tonight. Wang Chung their way to victory. I'm having way too much fun with these musical one-liners. Looking ahead for the Bulldogs, they get Cambridge Iceni Friday, next Monday, they host for Corey. And then they will run through some more conference teams. The last non-conference game is against Bemidji on February 17th, President's Day. Time to be determined. Big Lake, as we said, a back-to-back -back on Friday and Saturday, North Branch and Simley. Other non-conference games include Elk River, on Saturday, February 8th at Elk River, and then they will close out with five straight conference games. Princeton, Chisago Lake, St. Francis, Monticello, and North Branch. Monticello and Ricori in a tight battle for that two seed, if you go by the QRF, their record's similar. Seven, six, eight, and eight. Big Lake ball, no foul call. Becker going for the strip. And it stays Big Lake ball. Big Lake can work the clock. They lose it. Middlestad didn't see the pass coming. Mario Reese will call a timeout with 135 left, but Becker had a chance in Middlestad, unaware that a teammate was trying to hook him up. So the Hornets can eat up more time here with 135 left in regulation, 70-62. Again, these are two teams who don't figure to be in the conversation when it comes to winning Section 5, but a win over for Big Lake would create some uncertainty with that 4-5 and five seed given the closeness between Becker and Fridley. Now, we'll see if the coaches vote goes along the lines of seeding. Fridley playing in the Tri-Metro. And that conference getting a makeover this year with Richfield joining and a couple of schools leaving. But you do have a tough De La Salle and Holy Angels team, which I presume 
boost the QRF a little bit on the part of Fridley. 135 left. And for Big Lake, whatever happens, even just to pick up another win to go 4-11. When you know you're not going to be a contender, sometimes you want to celebrate the little things. And a win over Becker would certainly be more than a little thing. That's going to be a foul on Canute, his fourth. And this game, whatever happens, comes down to will come down to opportunities. And Becker, given a plethora of them, with all the Steals they forced. Offensive rebounds, no lack of hustle. But they had a hard time turning them into points, stringing together a series of possessions that would allow them a chance to come back. It's a nine point margin. Just a couple minutes ago. Becker got a steal and Middlestad didn't read the pass coming. So you hit a contested three. A little Kobe Bryant-like. And a foul on the Bulldogs. Double bonus time for the Hornets. That three-pointer gives Canute 23 points. And I believe that is the first 20 point game of the season for Canute. McConville to shoot two. Carter, he had a lot, does pick up his fifth. And so Powman will go in for Carter Callahan and he had a lot. We'll finish without a point. Two free throws for Peyton McConville. Big Lake 11 of 15 at the line. Becker 16 of 19. Eight point game. Turnover and that should just about do it. Or maybe not. Becker can't save it. 54 and a half seconds to go. As Big Lake looks to pick up another win. In the season lacking in them. Becker does create the turnover that time. Canute missing the three-pointer. Offensive rebound. Canute had the ball stripped before he went up. Now he'll fire the three, and I think McConville got a piece of it. And that's a microcosm of Becker's evening. Not giving up, but just not getting enough shots to go in. As Middlestead and Powman and Canute all missed on buckets that could have given the Bulldogs a lifeline. That sums up the second half for Becker. An endless amount of chances it seems, but just having a hard time putting the ball in. Jack Iverson to ice it at the line. Well, he misses the front end. But I'm not sure there's enough time here with 17 seconds left. Iverson missing both, but at this point, those misses academic. Big Lake. Got off on a hard start in the second half. And they'll hang on for a win over a conference rival. And a big one at that, 73-65. Big Lake goes to four and 11. Becker falls to eight and eight. No lack of hustle on the part of Becker, just could not get enough buckets to go in. And you saw that in the second half. 
Three or four offensive rebounds and nothing to show for it. Tough break for the Bulldogs. Big win for the Hornets. Wyatt Windhorst finishes with 20 points. Alec Moorhead with 15. Peyton McConville with 13. Jack Iverson with 13. Those are your notables for Big Lake. Becker led by Nick Canute in his first 20 point game of the season unofficially. 23 points is what he gets. Kate Callahan with 10 and Nick Middlestad with eight. With that, the first game of our doubleheader is complete. If you're watching this on YouTube, stay tuned for game two with the Becker and Big Lake girls teams going at it. This is High School Basketball, I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks for watching.